Today we have a very special guest joining us today. He's the former Ancient Aliens TV host for Tucson, Arizona, as well as the leading UFO investigator in Phoenix, Arizona. He runs a Facebook live show called Petroglyphs in the Sky. I would call him the, uh, the king of the petroglyphs and one of the best UFO hunters in the United States. person to do this. give a nice insertion welcome Jeff Woolwine. Thank you, thank you, and welcome back to another Petroglyphs in the Sky UFO show. I am your host, Jeff Woolwine. Great to see you guys back here tonight. Hope you guys are doing well and everybody's being safe and everyone's being okay. All right, so we have a great show lined up for you tonight, and uh, <clears throat> we might even get into some questions and answers. I've never really done that here before on the show, so... Um, because I don't have a lot of material uh, for tonight's show, but uh, so yeah, we might we might do a little bit of questions and answers. So yeah, um, look forward to that um, here at the end of the show. Um, I got a couple UFO videos I want to show, and uh, a couple petroglyphs that are located on South Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona, um, that match, you know, and and we're gonna kind of talk about that. Uh, we're gonna show some pretty cool UFOs, um, and uh, so yeah, that, that's gonna be neat. And uh, so, yeah, so let's get right into it. Glad you guys are here today. And make sure that you tell your friends and you, you like and subscribe to the video and subscribe to this channel. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky 
Uh, that's my YouTube channel. Make sure you, you like and subscribe and share to that. And also this page, uh, pay, uh, Facebook, Petroglyphs in the Sky. And uh, so, yeah, uh, we do shows like almost every weekend. We try to get them out there. And uh, we talk about your sightings. You know, send me your videos, your uh, UFO sightings. Send me your petroglyphs. Let's talk about it, you know. If I like it, we'll air it on the show. I'll give you credit uh, for the video. And uh, so, yeah, um, just send me your stuff. And if I don't get to you right away, there's a lot of email, a lot of messages here on Facebook I haven't been able to get to. Don't worry. I, I am getting to you. Just I get a lot, of, uh, a lot of email and a lot of messages. So I will get to you guys. So don't worry. So, so make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. And make sure that you hit up my YouTube channel, The Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky. And uh, you'll find me there and a lot of other UFO sightings and, uh, and a, a lot of cool stuff there. So, yeah. Also, on my website, that's right below here, uh, the p9hosting.prod.com uh, forward slash at petroglyphsinthesky.com forward slash and I'd like to give a, a shout out to my friend uh, Sean, who's in Cyber Scams of Australia. So if that if that website's a little bit long for you, you can uh, try uh, typing in petroglyphsinthesky.net. Uh, my friend Sean hooked me up with that. And uh, so if any of those links uh, aren't working, please email me and let me know. Sometimes they go down. And uh, so yeah, so that website, uh, the hosting dot dot com forward slash at petroglyphs on the sky dot com forward slash. Don't forget all that. That's huge, man. Uh, there's a lot of info there um, on the Phoenix Lights. What the Phoenix Lights is and. Um, uh, the petroglyphs, the true meaning of the petroglyphs, the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I show you a tomb, a photograph of a tomb that's located in Phoenix, Arizona on South Mountain uh, that I discovered. I discovered a lot of tombs up there. Uh, and then I verified it. I verified it uh, through the park, first park ranger in the 1930s by looking up his, liter his literature in the Phoenix Library in a folder that has been buried for the last 80 years. Now, this talks about what the Phoenix Lights is. It talks about who the Hohokam, the first Native Americans who lived here in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, it explains on what we're seeing in the skies today. Okay, not a bunch of hobo jobo, you know, people trying to sell you a book out for money and fame and trying to get on television and sell you movie tickets and blah, blah, blah. No, this is real stuff. This is credible stuff. All right, that's what I'm all about. I'm all about getting this information that I've dug up for over 17 years now and uh, is bringing this information to you. And uh, so, yeah, <clears throat> check it out. Lots of information on my website. And uh, you can go and check out my book uh, through Needly Worldwide Publishing, um, The Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky, Landscape for the Spirits, True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs Over Phoenix, Volume 1. Now, this isn't, this isn't like an everyday UFO book, okay? Not a lot of people will get this. Not a lot of people will understand this. Um, so <clears throat> it's, for the, it's only for the select few who actually knows what's going on here, who's not into the, you know, all these other crap about UFOs and, and spaceships and flying saucers and stuff, but actually taking a real hard look about what's going on. And it's our history, all of this information, the photographs of the petroglyphs, um, the information in the book, all the photographs of the tombs, how to understand the petroglyphs um, is all in this book. It's 15 years of research. And so, yeah, I, I've, been, I've been doing this a very, very long time. And uh, so, yeah, I, I go with what I can prove, what is credible. I don't go on hearsay. I don't go on hearsay. Oh, uh, somebody said a uh, spaceship uh, went over Phoenix, so now I'm going to go sell movie tickets and write a book about nothing and, uh, and tell people that hearsay uh, spaceship went over the valley. No, that's not what I'm all about. I'm all, I'm all about credibility. All right, I proved everything that's in this book, everything that I say about the petroglyphs, about all this information is verified. This is facts. So find all this information on Barnes & Noble, uh, um, uh, eBay, and uh, you know all, all places where ebooks are sold and things like that. And, and I don't make any money from this book. You know, I don't make a dime from it. 
You know, all this money that I, that I receive from the books, I don't see a penny of it. I told the, the uh, publishers to give it to the foster kids in Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm not about money. I'm not about fame. I'm not about any of that crap that a lot of these other uf ufologists out there are doing. I'm about, I'm about bringing this information to you. That I was the first one to discover these petroglyphs and their meetings here on the mountains around the Valley of the Sun that actually talk about UFO sightings. I'm the first one to actually explain what the Phoenix Lights is and has credibility, has credibility through the first park ranger of Phoenix, Arizona on what he says, what he says the real history of Phoenix, Arizona is. It's all in my book. It's all on my website. Search my name on the internet. I am all over the internet. I've done cable shows, news reports, radio shows. You can find me all over the place. I have not changed one iota on what I'm saying. I've been talking about this since 2005. I was the first one to bring this information to the public in 2005. I did the History Channel. I did True TV. I did a lot of other cable shows. And, uh, you know, this was all new information back then. And uh, so, yeah. You know, check it out. The Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky, True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs over Phoenix. Go out there and get yourself a copy today. And let me know what you think, man. Like I said, it's not a regular, everyday UFO book. It's a history book. It's a history on where, what really happened in the Valley of the Sun over a thousand years ago. It talks about who was here in Phoenix, Arizona, what the petroglyphs are talking about, you know, because we're not the first ones to see the Phoenix lights. We're not the first ones to see these UFOs in the sky. These Native Americans who first settled in, on the mountains, not only here in Phoenix, but around the world, they were the first ones to document this evidence. Matter of fact, they tell us, dude, they tell us, they, they, they draw pictures of what we are seeing in the skies today. They're prehistoric photographs. They didn't have video cameras back then to record their sightings. They had stone boulders to record their sightings on specific areas around uh, the earth, around the mountains, and th around these sacred mountains, in the spot where the event took place at. This is the reason why we find petroglyphs on one side of the mountain. We don't find any petroglyphs on the other side of the mountain. Is because nothing happened over there. All the information is over here. And this is why you shouldn't touch the petroglyphs because it's telling a story, telling us a story of what happened in that area. So, yeah. All of this is verified. I mean... <laughs> I'm probably the most credible guy out here, uh, and I can back up everything that I say. And uh, so, yeah, check it out. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to show a UFO, and uh, I believe it's uh, from Mark Scar. Mark Scar. Okay, now I thought this, is, this UFO was very interesting. Now, now let's take a look at this. Okay. So we just missed it. It's fading out. But my point is, if I lost it, it looks like I lost it. Nope. Here it is. Okay. My point is these petroglyphs here. So the reason why I call my information, my discoveries, petroglyphs in the sky, is because that is what we are seeing in the skies today. Okay. Notice the circle and the dot there. You see that? You see the way uh, Mark has filmed this, this entity? Notice how I don't say craft, right? These are not spaceships, okay? These are living entities, all right? And this is what the petroglyphs are talking about. That's what these these uh, petroglyphs are showing. They're, they're photographs, man, of what we're seeing. So we have the, the sighting over here to the left, and then the circle and the carved circle and dot. This, this, this carving is at least um, anywhere from 9 to 1,000 years old. Okay, so you see the circle and the dot? Now look what he's doing. He's morphing. He's, he's, he's changing shape. So the Native Americans, they tell us that these things shape shift, right? They're changing shape. The archaeologist likes to call these things anthropomorphs because they're morphing. They're changing shapes. They're looking like people. They're looking like animals. They're looking like snakes. Cuesto Cuado of Mexico. I tell you what, folks, he is here in the Valley of the Sun. I have filmed Cuesto Cuado many times. You can see the photographs and the video on my website. Check it out. But here you can see what this petroglyph is actually representing. Now, these photographs here that I'm pulling off of, of the uh, petroglyphs, this, the, you can find some of these uh, in my book. Okay, so let's check out another petroglyph. 
Look at this one here. You see that glyph there? Now what is he doing? <clears throat> that circle and the dot that we're seeing on the left-hand side of the video, he is actually growing some arms, it looks like, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like he's got some kind of lines coming down from him? That's what these entities do. These are not spaceships. These are not little, little men from Alpha Centauri. This is not a gray guy in a suit running around with big ass eyes. No, that's not what's going on here. What is going on in our skies, and a lot of people don't really understand this yet because other so-called UFO researchers has been uh, fabricating uh, stories just to sell you books and to get on televisions and, and movies and, and, and stay, stay famous. Okay, so they're saying spaceships and all this crap, and it's not. These things are living entities. That is what's going on here. And you can see the petroglyphs here. The petroglyphs are telling us, dude. Let's look at history. To understand what's going on in our skies, we first have to understand our past. And our past tells us that these things that we see in the skies today have been here before and continue to be here. And I'm going to give you a secret. These things are not uh, from another planet. These things are from here. This is their planet also. Just as the oceanographers are finding new species of life uh, below the ocean, this is a new species of life above the ocean that the scientists and a lot of people who know about this, these things, because yes, you know, there are people who know about these things, um, fail to tell the public about, you know, because of their past, because of these entities' past, because what we're looking at today and what the petroglyphs are, tell, are telling us and what the oral tradition stories are telling, about, telling us about these beings, it is not a good thing. This is why, in my opinion, there will never be disclosure. Even when the damn things land on the White House lawn, they will never admit that they knew about these things because of their past. And, the, and their past of these beings is not a good one. Let's look at this petroglyph here. Here again, we have the circle and the dot. Orb taking man up into the sky. Look at that. You see this orb? Now this orb to the left, according to this petroglyph here, he is taking a man up into the sky. See that? So this orb that we're looking at and a lot of other orbs in the sky with these black dots, you know, when I was filming the Phoenix Lights in 2004 and, and continue to do that, you know, a, a lot of times you can see there's like a dot in the middle. There's a black dot in the middle. Among all this plasma, you know, this plasma energy is this, this dot, okay? And... You know, a lot of people think, a lot of people think um, that they see five lights out there that is some kind of spaceship. Okay, that is not the case. Each light is the entity. It's not a craft. It's not a little gray guy inside this light. Each light is the entity, is the beam. And I get a lot of people asking me, well, dude, why do these things light up? Why do they have lights on them? Do they need to see in front of them as they're going through space? No, that has nothing to do with it. When these things light up, it has everything to do with them absorbing energy. These things are absorbing energy. And, you, and, and the way they um, uh, gather this energy is from natural energy spots around the world, such as fault lines and volcanoes and natural energy spots such as nuclear facilities. Okay, and they follow a pattern. All right, I did, I, did, I did many, many years of research about this. How I found this out is pure experience. Okay, nobody told me this. I experienced all this. And what I learned over all these years is, is especially South Mountain, because South Mountain is special. It's sacred. It's a holy mountain. Okay, and it was, and it was created. It was created by a fault line, all right, by a volcanic fault line. And on the east side uh, of South Mountain, there's a power plant that's bored down into that fault line. In 2004, I'm watching these lights 
over uh, over that power plant uh, in the summer of 2004. I'm, I'm watching these lights doing great formations over that power plant. They're absorbing energy. Okay, so the reason why they light up is because they're absorbing energy. All right, not only in the ground but also in the sky, man. Because there's energy in the sky. Um, I think uh, um, um, what was that show? Can't think of it now. Um, Skinwalker Ranch, episode four. They verified all that I discovered back in 2005 that it's energy. As a matter of fact, they launched these rockets up in, up into the sky, and they had these uh, test sensors in there to see what kind of energy is up there in the sky. And so they're launching these little bottle rockets up, and, um, and the energy is collecting. Uh, their meters are collecting the energy and, and determine how much energy is energy in the sky. They verified that there was energy up in the sky, and also when they were doing that. That, there was an entity uh, an entity in the sky absorbing that energy right at the same time that this rocket was up there uh, verifying that there's energy up there okay I've been saying this ever since 2005 I was the first one to bring this bring this information to the public to the UFO community and back then they're just saying oh you know you don't know what you're talking about dude I know what I'm talking about dude I've been there I've witnessed these things I understand why these things are attracted to this mountain so much and they follow a pattern they follow a pattern this is the reason why you know especially like Stonehenge and all these light and shadow places that we find around uh, around the earth uh, where the sun aligns with these rocks or these petroglyphs on the equinox and the morning sun sunrise of the equinox and and the solstice and things like that the archaeologist wants us to believe well um, it's time for us to plant corn it's just telling the native people that it's time to plant corn bullshit that has nothing to do with planting corn it has everything to do with these beans in the sky on when they will return because they follow a pattern they follow the seasons they follow the equinox and the solstice okay when the sun is in the right position of these energy lines or ley lines fault lines things like that it opens up this doorway and it attracts these entities these creatures uh, creatures to these energy spots so they can absorb the energy that is it no question about it that is what's going on that is the reason why in sun months sun months we can see ufos almost on a daily basis and then all of a sudden they're gone where did they go they went to another energy spot okay they went to another energy spot you know a lot of people think that 1997 march 13th that phoenix light spread and they're, they're saying oh this craft went over arizona first of all there's no evidence of that i've been studying this stuff for years i cannot find one photograph video anything going over phoenix arizona if a handful of people can film lights on the far west of phoenix arizona then why couldn't a handful of people film lights film something going over the city of phoenix i go what's credible and to me hearsay is not credible we must examine the facts we must have proof positive of what happened that night and what happened that night there was lights on the far west of south mountain uh that night and a lot of them are saying well this craft went over arizona because it went from the top of the state to phoenix to the lower part of the of, the, of uh, arizona no you know what was going on they're jumping they're jumping from one energy spot okay then they come down to phoenix to south mountain and they absorb their en energy there and then they went on to the next energy spot man they're gassing up dude they're fueling up man that is what's going on they're absorbing the energy a lot of people don't understand this yet all right but that is what's going on it's probably going to take these so-called ufo researchers another 20 years to figure this out but i'm here today telling you the secret and that's it that is what's really going on look it up do do your information uh do your sky watching do your uh your um uh ufo investigating you know do what i did dude you know it's not it's not about you know uh false information it's about bringing this information to you to you so you can go off and verify this and go off and do this do this if i can see them if i if i figure all this out so can you and see nobody else uh nobody helped me i learned all this the hard way of going out there day after day night after night 
understanding when these things are here, marking down the times and the dates, watching the sun, understanding the petroglyphs, talking to Native Americans about the history of Phoenix, Arizona, going to Phoenix Library, digging up this information about Phoenix. I mean, I did all this myself, okay? I'm bringing this information to you. Now it's up to you to verify it. Because I'm bringing it, it's here. This is what I'm telling you. It's energy, it's fault lines, it's it's creatures, not crafts. Um, they're here, not from Alpha Centauri. That's it, man. And the Native Americans, they saw these things, dude. Yeah, that's what is really going on here. So check it out. Go out there. And if you're, if you're looking to, to do UFOs, if you want to be a UFO hunter, the first thing I would do is find out the history of, of your state, of your city. And see what the Native Americans say. Find where the petroglyphs are. Find the mountains that have the petroglyphs. The petroglyphs that, that are on these mountains, especially spirals. Spirals is what you are looking for. That is the source. That is where these entities show up at. Okay, so basically when you see them in the sky and they're flying across the sky, what are they doing? They are coming from one energy spot, one mountain, going across the valley, going across the state, to another energy spot. And that's why, why that's why we see them in the sky when they're moving. Because they're on a mission, dude. They're heading to another energy spot. Okay? And uh, their their energy, when when they get a lot of energy, that's when they start to light up, you know? And uh, you know, for instance, look at the fireflies, look at the lightning bugs. You know how they light up and things like that? Well, that's what these they, that's what these beans are doing in a source, in a, in a case. Um, that's just them. The, these things light up as they're absorbing energy and also when they're, you know, going across the sky because they're full of energy, all right? That's just them. That's how they were created, okay? Just much like the lightning bug. That's how they were created. They have lights on them, okay? So it's nothing to do with mechanics at all. It has nothing to do with mechanics. It has to do with entities, uh, living beings, okay? These lights, these UFOs that we see in the skies, are not spaceships, but they're living entities, and they've always been here. I don't know how many times i got to say that. Okay, so let's get into this. Here we find another petroglyph. Now, oops. Come back here, you. Let's look at this glyph. Okay? So you can see the, the circle and the dot, the head, if you will. All right, so what is he doing? He's anthropomorphing. He's changing shape. He's looking like a man. He's doing his own thing. What is he doing? He's got the circle and the dot, and he's growing arms and legs, and he's growing like these antennas or these ears that are coming out of his head. You see that? That is what's going on in our skies. In order to understand uh, the future, and what's going on? You have to understand the past. And I tell you what, these beings ha have always been uh, with us, have are always been in our uh, skies, and um, they're in our past as well. Now look at this. This is a, a shot over Phoenix, Arizona. This is on South Mountain. All right, I took this photograph overlooking Phoenix. So the bottom petroglyphs, the bottom ones there, all those squiggly lines, that is the energy. Okay, that is energy. All right, that is what's under this rock here. That is what this rock is 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 uh, supporting. Um, there's another spiral over around there somewhere, um, and it's 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 energy. And then above it, above it, look at it. It's it's absorbing. It's it's right over that energy spot. That's what this petroglyph meaning is talking about. This orb, this circle with the dot orb, is right over this energy spot. Now, I um I mentioned spirals uh, earlier, and spirals have everything to do with it. These are doorways. Um, when a shaman Native American was teaching me these petroglyphs up there on South Mountain, um, who I found uh, in the uh, Pueblo Indian Art Museum in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, he works there. Um, I had him go up there and, and, and explain to me these petroglyphs. He's telling me that these that these spirals are doorways, okay? And when the spiral ends down, there's a doorway uh, uh, easily, either like those cracks. You see the cracks in this rock here? You see the cracks on this, on this boulder here? All right, so if there was a spiral there, if there was a spiral and it ended at that crack, I'd have to say that that crack uh, is the doorway. And that's what he was. That's what he was telling me that these uh, these spirits, 
Not spaceships, not nuts and bolts technology, but these spirits, man. He's calling them spirits. Not crafts, spirits. When these spirits absorb, they're going into the underworld. All right? They're going into the underworld. If, if the spiral ends at a crack, that's the doorway into the underworld. If the spiral ends down, all the way down, it's that whole landscape. It's the whole ground right there. These entities are coming and going from that ground. Okay? If the spiral ends up, there's a doorway in the sky. There's a doorway in the sky. That's, there's like a vortex. Okay? These things just magically appear in the sky, much like the Phoenix Lights and some of these other UFOs that we see at nighttime or daytime when they just appear in the sky right there. And then they disappear. They're going through a vortex. They're going through a door. They're going through an energy door. Okay? When the spiral goes uh, clockwise, it's a doorway in. When the spiral goes counterclockwise, it's a doorway out. Now, the Native Americans and, and, and um, um, all these uh, uh, ancient uh, people, uh, they're saying that it's going into the underworld, okay? But on a scientific level, on a scientific level, they're going into that fault line. They're going into that energy source. That is what they're doing uh, to the Native Americans, to the ancient ones. They're going into the underworld. But to... And as, but to us, the scientifically uh, minded, they're hitting that energy spot, man. They're hitting that fault line. That's exactly what this petroglyph is talking about here. This orb is right over that energy source. Here we go again. Look at these. Look at these. See those? See those? Uh, see the dots there? Look at that. How much clearer can you get with that? You see where I'm going with this? Petroglyphs in the sky. My, my. Watch these UFOs fly by. That's it, brother. That is what's going on. Look at these glyphs. Now look at that orb to the left. That's a perfect match. This is what we can verify. This is what we can prove positive, say, that these things have been here before. We're not crazy. We're not seeing things because these things have been recorded, recorded before on these sacred mountains. It's not just some Indian out there just drawing graffiti, dude. No, he's telling us a story. He's telling us what is here for us. All these petroglyphs, it's for our generation, believe it or not. Okay, this is the generation to, to understand what's going on here. Okay, and I'm, I'm leading the way. I'm leading you guys down this path, you know, to truth. All right, because I started going down this path. All right, I, I, I went into this thinking, oh, there's a spaceship going over Phoenix, Arizona, you know. And um, so I started going down this path. But all the evidence, all the facts, all the petroglyphs, everything was pointing me down another direction and i've been going down that road ever since and every time you know i go on this road it's making more sense and more sense and that's it you know because you can't go on hearsay you can't go on what you can't prove you know because there's there's not one proof uh, a photograph of a spaceship of an alien there is none there's no proof. I don't care how much these people computer generate their image just to sell you a book, just to get on TV, just to get famous, just to sell you a movie ticket. You know, that's bullshit, dude. Right? There's not one clear evidence photograph of a spaceship. What we can verify, what is proof, is right here on the rocks, dude. Right here on the rocks. That is what is credible because we know we know that these things have been here a very, very long time, okay? A lot longer than all of us have been around. These things have been around, you know, for at least a thousand years. You know, some archaeologists think that these, some of these glyphs are a lot older, you know, than, than, you know, what a lot of other people say, okay? But even still, it backs up the proof, man. You know, it's telling us, look, it's showing us. It is showing us. These petroglyphs are telling us what the hell is here, man. What is in our skies? Look at this. Look at that. 
Look at what's going on here. Look at the circle with the dot. Now look at the petroglyph, the circle and the, and the dot. And look at this line that's coming down. Now a lot of people, a lot of uh, misunderstood people would say, Oh, that's a balloon, dude. Well, why is the damn Indians carving balloons on rocks when balloons haven't even been invented yet, right? Okay, why are they carving balloons, man? You know, that's why they're, they're saying, Oh, that's a balloon in the sky. Because they're looking for crafts. They have been misled. All these years, they're looking for spaceships, not what's really here. And this is what I'm here to do. I'm here to turn your mind another direction, turn your eyes another direction, and 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 look at look at another way of what these UFOs are. Okay, look at the evidence. Look at the proof that I'm bringing to you. Okay, look what we can verify. We can't verify crafts. We can't verify little gray guys. We can verify what's on the rocks and what we see, what we record for our own eyes. Okay, and that is what's going on here. Okay, so a lot of people are saying, oh, there's a balloon in the sky. Well, you know, the way this thing is moving in the sky and all this, you know, it amazes me, dude. It amazes me how, many, how all these people say, oh, dude, that's a balloon. Oh, that's a flare. You know, and, oh, now it's drones. Oh, come on, you guys. How? Oh God, I'm not going to get into it, but it's just, it's just mind boggling how ignorant some of these people are, you know, and then, and then we have, um, people out there who are, who, um, you know, just, well, we won't get into that. Okay. But it's crazy. It's crazy. This is a crazy feel. This is a crazy world that we live in and, uh, these UFOs and things. And, um, so yeah, but, you know, what we have to verify, what we have to, to look at is, is what we can prove, okay? You have to look at the proof. You have no proof. It's hearsay. We can't go on hearsay. I'm sorry. Okay. Here's another one. Look at that. Look at that thing. And see that? It's like it's got this line, right? And it's connected with this other one. And this is in a parking lot of uh, a hole in the rock in Phoenix, Arizona. This petroglyph has actually been moved. It was probably on South Mountain. And they, they moved this petroglyph just to make it, you know, um, look, you know, just for art. You know, just to boost the scenery, the scenery there. You know, more Native American um, things in it. But this actually is that hole in the rock in Phoenix, Arizona. And that's that's a that's interesting too. Uh, when you read my book, it tells you what hole in the rock is actually is and what its purpose is. All right. So that's very, very uh interesting um stuff that we can verify. You know, so it's not it's not hearsay, it's it's what we can verify and, and who actually uh constructed that mountain. It's not natural. Hole in the rock in Phoenix, Arizona is not a natural mountain. Pick up my book Give some money to the foster kids and uh, find out what Hole in the Rock is really is. Okay, so it looks like I am done with that UFO sighting. So thank you from uh, Mark Scar. Okay, so great, great video. And uh, thanks so much for uh, uh, filming that. Okay, so make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. And... Uh, you know, and uh, tell your friends about it, dude. You know, get this information out. You know, look at these UFOs. Look at these petroglyphs in a different way. All right. That's what I'm here. That's what I'm all about. All right. I'm here to bring the information, the credible information, the truth to you. Not hearsay. Not what we can't prove. This and that. Just, you know, it's all credible. It's all real stuff. So make sure you tell your friends about this page. Tell your friends what's going on. You know, look me up on 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 Facebook, on on the internet. I'm all over all I'm all over the place. And find me uh, on uh, on YouTube, the Phoenix Lights petroglyphs in the sky. Okay, so let's take uh, let's take some breaks, and uh, then we'll get into this other UFO real quick. We're going to be talking a little bit about them, the latest theory as we celebrate the anniversary, even though we've seen things that may prove it otherwise than a UFO. Stay with us.
March 13th, 1997. You guys all remember these lights here? It was 14 years ago tonight that phones and newsrooms and 911 call centers were ringing off the hook. The reason? Suspicious lights hovering over the Arizona sky. They came to know, be known as the Phoenix Lights, and over the years there have been many theories as to what the lights were. But to this day, the identity of the Phoenix Lights remain a mystery. The experience, some say, was just one of many major UFO sightings, and they say we've been visited for centuries. What proof? Well, one local UFO expert says you just have to look at the mountains. Oh, well, I've been seeing UFOs for about 15, 16 years now. It's become a lifelong passion for Phoenix resident Jeff Woolwine. I do a lot of hiking, a lot of research. Um, I've dedicated um, five years of my life into this type of research. We'll be heading right up there. We can see some petroglyphs with some spirals there. And when we get closer, you'll be able to interpretate, you know, the meaning of it. Woolwine was one of many residents to see the Phoenix Lights 14 years ago. But it didn't stop there. He's documented years of sightings on his website going beyond just the traditional lights in the sky research. Doing my investigations, I'm coming to find out that the petroglyphs here in the Valley of the Sun are talking about what we're seeing in the sky today as far as UFOs and strange things in the sky. Woolwine says he's found it's been happening for centuries. You see, they didn't have video cameras back then. They had stone boulders to record their sightings on what they saw back in their time. And the evidence is written all over our Arizona mountains. Here on, the, on what we call A Mountain, we find this petroglyph here. And it seems to represent a family. And they clearly have their hands up in the air as to say they're, they're in the appeasement pose and they're looking up at two orbs in the sky. This mountain is very active for UFO sightings. Um, most of the time when I come out here, we do see some orbs up in the sky. Woolwine says the best time to see the orbs is early in the morning or late afternoon. The, the more you see it, the more you're intrigued. You know, you want to see more of them. And I really think that it's only a matter of time when everybody will know that, yes, there is something here. Yes, we are being visited. And we just have to ask ourselves, okay, we're not the only advanced civilizations in the universe. What happens next? Have you picked up your Phoenix Lights petroglyphs from the sky? True stories, myths, legends, and UFOs over Phoenix, Volume 1. Learn about the lost history of Phoenix, Arizona. Learn about the petroglyphs carved on the sacred mountain, now known as South Mountain, that holds the past to the Phoenix Lights and the UFOs over Phoenix. Pick up your copy today. Phoenix Lights, petroglyphs from the sky. True stories, myths, legends, and UFOs over Phoenix. Volume 1. Find it on eBay, Barnes & Noble, and any source where books are available at. Okay, so, yeah, make sure you go out and, get, and, and pick up that book, man. There's a lot of information on, on uh, South Mountain and uh, the Petroglyphs and, and the whole history of Phoenix, Arizona that has been covered up uh, for, last, for the last 80 years. And uh, it's all verified. It's all proven. Okay, so this other vi uh, UFO video, um, it comes from Israel Vega. Israel Vega. And uh, he filmed, uh, let me find it here. He filmed this uh, object. Now, a lot of people have been seeing these orbs. You know, I've been filming these orbs a lot also, you know. And uh, so let's take a look at some petroglyphs here. So this, these petroglyphs, right? So here we have one, and a lot of them would say uh, this is a, a lizard man, okay? All right, so let's examine this just a minute here. Okay, so we have this orb in the sky. Look at this orb. Many of us have seen these things before. Okay, now look at this petroglyph over here to the right. Now let's start 
with that belly. You see that belly of this petroglyph? See that circular? See that that round dot right there in the middle in the belly? Okay. I believe I've witnessed these things morphing into, you know, serpents and other things. All right. They look like, you know, petroglyph, petroglyph stick figure men. Okay. I've seen these things. So that circle in the middle is the orb that we're looking at over here to the left. Okay. In the video. That is what we are looking at. That's that's what this petroglyph is insinuating. It's telling us that this orb is the is the heart of it, is the base, is the beginning source, is the start of it. So it's an orb and then he's growing arms and legs and what looks like a tail. Okay? And then he's got another he's got this head up there. All right? That is another orb also. It's not a head. It is another orb. It is a barbell. There is a lot of carvings of barbells um, on South Mountain and also around uh, the world where we see these barbell carvings. Okay, that is what these things are talking about. And it's what is it doing, archaeologists? It's anthropomorphing. It's changing shape. It's trying to look like a man. And look how big this sucker is. Look at the bottom right of this entity's tail. Look at that. That is a regular man. So we know that this thing, what is it? Is it a giant? Is it a Nephilim? That could be. That could be exactly what this petroglyph is talking about. Okay, it could be talking about this Genesis 6 that we read in some of these scriptures when it says that these entities, these fallen ones, these supernatural entities, all right, were cast down to earth. Right? And the people of those days worship these things as gods. Oh my. Does that tell the story of what we see on these rocks out here? Do we see um, uh, sacrificing altars out here on the mountains in Phoenix, Arizona? Yes, we do. Do we see sacrificing, uh, trying, uh, representing these things as gods, sacrificing men and, 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 and warriors to these beings in the sky? Yes, it is. This is what these scriptures are saying. Now, it's not about religion. Let's take religion out the door. Let's look at these scriptures on what it really is. Let's look at these scriptures as a type of history book of the world. Okay, especially when we look at some of these other scriptures that has been left out, you know, like the book of Enoch. Okay, and then um, the Sumerian text when we get into the Anunnaki, all that crazy stuff. Well, that's what these petroglyphs are talking about. We can go to these sacred scrolls. We can read what was going on in that. And then we can go on these sacred mountains and we can see the prehistoric photographs. That is what's going on in our world. It's not some spaceships coming down, picking people up, probing them, doing all this crazy crap. No, that is not what's going on here. It has everything to do with these sacred scrolls and what's carved on the mountains around the world in these sacred sites. Okay, that is the truth here. That is what's really going on. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of people don't want to look at that way. You know, you start talking about this stuff. They're like, oh, dude, you're talking about the Bible. Oh, shut up. You're talking about religion. I don't want to hear that. You know, blah, 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 blah. Dude, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about what history is, man. This is our history. Look at the biblical archaeologists. Boy, they have discovered so much stuff that's in that book. They have verified. And that's what this uh, program, that's what I'm all about, man. It's verifying uh, what we can prove. All right. So if it's not proven, then the archaeologists wouldn't be finding all this stuff. But yet, in all these years, the archaeologists, every year, they come to find out they're finding new stuff, new stuff that these ancient scrolls are talking about. OK, this is one area here where these UFOs, these entities, these orbs and these petroglyphs are combined. And the scrolls, what we read in the scrolls is all together it all matches this is the road that we really need to pay attention to not religion but what
what these uh, scrolls and petroglyphs are talking about because it's exact, the exact same thing as what we are seeing in the skies today, and it's our history. It is our history. That is what's going on here. And it's sad. It's sad that a lot of people, you know, don't look at it that way. That's the reason why they're so lost in the dark. That's why they're looking for spaceships. That's why they're reading, you know, all these books, you know, on spacecrafts and people getting abducted and, and all this crap, you know, because they don't look into it. They don't, they don't verify. They don't verify the story. They just take it as word, as, as, as written gold, and they believe this person, right? And not looking into actually what this person is saying and what he can prove. Okay, and that's the problem here. All right, that is the problem. And it's sad, you know. Here's another example. <laughs> so look at this here so there we go okay that's what I was trying to do jeez technology right don't you love live videos? Anything and everything will go wrong. Okay, so let's look at this again. So we have the UFO orb. That's what these uh, that's that's what these arrows are pointing at. That's what we are looking at in the in the video here. Looking at the UFO orb, and we are looking at the petroglyphs that is talking about what we are seeing in the skies today. Okay, the evidence, dude. Look at the proof. Look at the evidence here. We have a circle belly. We have a circle in the sky. And we have the archaeologists telling us that they're anthropomorphs. We have the Native Americans telling us that these things are shapeshifters. Okay. We have some of these uh, scrolls uh, that are confirming uh, what we are seeing in the sky today. It's telling us what these things are. And it looks like, it looks like I'm out of petroglyph pictures. Okay. So that's it, man. So... Thank you, Israel Israel Vega. Hope I'm spe hope I'm saying that right. So great capture, dude. If you found if you film any more, please send it to me. And uh, you know, I always tell I always tell my sky watchers, you know, make sure that you get a video camera. Cell phones just don't work, dude. They just you can't zoom in very very well. We can't analyze it, you know. And and just don't take photographs. Photographs. There's so many altered photographs out there, you know, CGI and Photoshop and things like that. We must see video photographs. We don't know what it is. Could be a fly on the wall. I have no idea. Okay, photographs are, are out of the question. Um, if you want to send me steel pictures, steel pics from the video, that's great. Okay, send me the video too. I'd love to look at it. You know, then we can zoom in, we can analyze it. All right, and always make sure that you film the object going away in the sky. Always verify how these objects leave in the sky because that's that's important. Okay, because there's a lot of hoaxers out there. They film these lights, right? Okay, and it's actually a plane or something, right? And it's, it's, it's a plane, and it's coming at you, or it's coming in, in a direction, you know, where it's, it's illuminating the whole sky, you know, because these lights in front of the aircrafts are, are intense. They're meant to be seen, so other aircrafts will see them, okay? And so we see the, we see the light, you know, a few, about 1,000 feet up, you know, and it's so bright that it, and you can't see the airplane. You can't see anything else but that light, right? Now, I've been fooled before, too. This is why I know what I'm talking about, okay? I used to think that these lights, you know, oh, that's a UFO, right? But it turns out to be a plane. It was a plane. I see it blinking, okay? It's repetitionally blinking. You know, these objects don't repetitiously blink like that, 
Okay, they, they don't blink in a pattern, right? Something blinks in a pattern, it's man-made. It's the anti-collision lights, it's the FAA lights warning beacons. Okay, that's what you're looking for, all right? And a lot of people, they film these lights in the sky, all right, the, and, and they cut it off, they edit it, they cut it, right when the object, you know, turns, and, it, and then you can clearly see that it's an airplane, all right, but then they, they stop it. You know, because they don't want people to know it's an oh, it's an airplane. You know, because then you can see the blinking light, you can see the tail, and blah blah blah, right? So yeah, it's very important that you film these objects leaving the sky so we can analyze it. You know, send it to me. I'll do a zoom in. I'll, I'll enhance the video. Um, I'll check it out. I'm I'm experienced. I've been doing this many many years. You know, and and how I know this is because, dude. I go out there and I specifically film these things just so I know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so I film an airplane and then I go back and I look at the footage and I understand that that's an airplane. I film a balloon, then I go back and I look at it so I understand that that's, that's a balloon. I film military flares so I can go back and look at the video and understand what I'm looking at, okay? I experience, that is what you need to do, okay? Just don't assume that that is a UFO light in the sky. Okay, make sure you know what you're talking about before you post it, right? Because there's a lot of people out there and, and who will just jump down on you and all kinds of crap, you know, once they say, oh, that's an airplane, blah, blah. You have to prove what you say, dude. And cutting off videos right in the middle, you know, without showing them how they leave, that's a dead giveaway that there, there's something fishy about that video. Man, I've been fooled. I've been fooled too. You know, I used to think, you know, that those lights, you know, you know, were were lights, you know. But then I understood that it was an airplane, you know. So I've made some pretty bad mistakes in my ufology, but I've lived and learned. Okay, I lived and learned. All right, and, and that's why you, you always verify what you're talking about first. You just can't throw something out there and expect it to stick, dude. Okay, you you must verify what you're saying. Okay. All right. So let's try something new. Let's try some questions and answers before we wrap up the show. Okay. Let me get to it. Okay. Okay, so give me a few minutes so I can get into this comments here. If it'll let me. Come on, thing. That's why I don't do questions and answers because it's so hard for me anyway to get into this. Okay, so what is this? Okay, now it just got bigger. Okay, so let's see if anybody ask, is asking any questions real quick. So ask me some questions here on my Facebook page, not the page that, that you were shared that you've seen this at. You have to go to my page, I believe, to see it so I can see the comments. Okay, looks like it's just my wife Pam and uh, Diane talking. <laughs> Is there anybody here that would like to, uh, that like to ask a question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't look like it. It doesn't. <laughs> All right. So I don't I don't see any comments right here.
<laughs> okay. All right. So it looks like that we're gonna we're we're probably gonna wrap it up here. I don't see any I don't see any questions. Um, so any questions that I see later on, um, I'll I'll get notified and I'll go back and I'll answer it. So um, you know, glad you guys are are watching and please make sure that you like and and you follow. Uh, Petroglyphs in the Sky. Pick up my my non nonprofit book, um, The Phoenix Lights, Petroglyphs in the Sky, Landscape for the Spirits, True Stories, Myths, Legends, and UFOs of a Phoenix. That gives you all the information um, on what the Phoenix Lights is. It's not a regular UFO book, so it goes into something a little bit deeper, and a lot of people might not understand this yet. But as years progress, I'm sure they will. So check out my website, the p9hosting.prod.com uh, forward slash at petroglyphsinthesky.com forward slash. And uh, if that's too long, check out petroglyphsinthesky.net. That might be working for you also. So thank you guys so much for, um, so much for watching. And uh, we will see you guys later. Thanks, thanks again. the next exciting episode. Keep your eyes in the skies. You never know what you might see.